Welcome back again, my friends. We're here to take a look at our last surprise modification on Bling My Boat. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing the big reveal. Now let's walk through some of the features that we used to create it and how we got some more insight to our design. Nice. So let's start first by taking a closer look at what the final design actually is. If you didn't see the big reveal, uh, I ended up mounting a slingshot to the front of my boat, which I thought we could have some fun with if you wanted to uh, launch a water balloon at your friend out on the water or something like that. Nice little surprise for Garrett. And basically where I started with this one was reusing some of the data that I already had. And I mentioned before that I wanted this modular design where I could snap other attachments onto this ball mount. After rethinking it for a slingshot, that's probably not the best idea. I wanted something a bit more stable. So I thought about a different way to design the bracket. It won't be quite as easy for attachment purposes, but it should be a little bit stronger um, and a little bit more stable for the end use case here. So basically what I did was just use the move copy body, which you've seen me use in other modifications now to take the base surface or the, the base solid rather of that mounting bracket. And I'm then gonna reuse that by thickening it. First off, I might need a little bit more strength in that base if I'm going to apply a load to it. So that was the idea here. I just used the move face function to add a bit more thickness here. So we're gonna start with this first section of geometry here to then build off of for our slingshot design. So what I ended up doing was creating a body up top here to represent the upper section of the slingshot and we'll make some modifications to it as we go along. But this is just a, a pretty simple loft feature where I took two profiles, one elliptical shape, one circular shape, kind of gave it a little bit of strength in the direction of pull with that elliptical shape. So that was kind of my intent there. And I ended up using the selection manager to pick and choose different regions of a sketch for my guide curves. So if you didn't know how you can organize some of that information, you can basically use one sketch to create all this and then pick and choose what you want with your selection manager. Easy enough, of course, we can just mirror that body that we created over to the other side. And then I'm gonna create a connecting body. You'll notice that I didn't merge it together right away. And that was intentional because I wanna choose how I'm actually merging these bodies together. With the curvature of that mounting bracket, figured it would be easier just to combine these afterwards using the intersect feature, which you've seen me use before, and remove the sections that I don't want to take advantage of. So that was pretty simple. Um, we're just kind of eyeballing it for the purpose of building that first feature right now. We'll come back and refine it later on if we need to, but I think that's a good place to start. Let's review this intersect feature real quick so you guys can see exactly how that was used. If you missed it in the last video, essentially what you'll do is pick the bodies that you wish to intersect together. You can create a combined region, but you can also remove certain pieces of that geometry. So I find the intersect tool super handy for stuff like this, especially with a complex surface that I'm going up to. It makes it nice and simple um, to actually create that body and get what you want. Now moving forward, the next thing I wanted to do was create a little indentation to hold the surgical tubing that I'm gonna use for the slingshot. And I can use a pretty simple principle in this case of just laying out a quick shape here, like a quarter inch rectangular shape and implement a split line. And then I can get creative with using some features like that. So split line, if you're not familiar with it, Basically, it's a way to just take a face and separate it into multiple regions by projecting a sketch or other pieces of reference geometry if you have those. So I just picked the two upper legs of that fork and split those into multiple regions. Now what I wanna do with that is pick the new split regions that I've created and offset some surfaces to make a little indentation. So you'll see where I'm going with this in just a moment. We'll create a slight offset there and ultimately what I wanna do is delete that section of those forks. So I use the delete face command, uh, pretty straightforward. You can find that on your command search and it just creates a surface body with an open region there. What we need to do now is go back and fill those regions back in. And that's pretty simple to do with a surface fill. And you'll find this on your surfaces toolbar. 
It's basically just selecting edges of the existing model and you can fill in the surfaces with whatever type of um, contact constraint that you want there. So just kind of a planar surface in this particular case. Now I did that for all four regions that were opened up after I created that surface body. And in the final operation of a surface fill, you can use the create solid function as you see here. And there we've got a solid body. Everything looks pretty good in this case. We'll go ahead and implement a couple of fillets here to round off some of the corners. I think that looks fine. So what I did next was create a couple of slot shapes here and I thinned them out just a little bit um, just to improve strength of that base a little but reuse some of the edges from previous slot features that I put in the other base. So this thing's all connected now. We've got one last fillet feature there to finish off the design. I think everything looks pretty good in this case. Now, one of my concerns about how this part will perform is just the overall strength of it. So we're gonna take advantage of some of our simulation tools here in just a moment. But just to recap with you guys, if you select a body and then choose to save that out um, as an STL file, it will allow you to save just that one body. You've seen us do that a couple of times now. So I can get that thing ready for 3D printing. Now onto the simulation portion of this. It's pretty straightforward to get started. We'll just implement a quick little static study here and take a quick look at our stress concentrations. Now there's a bunch of bodies here in this part file that ultimately I don't need for this simulation. So what I'm gonna do is pick most everything in the study and exclude it from the analysis and then I'll bring the one body back in that I do wish to use. Next step in the process, of course, defining a material for that part so that we can understand its behavior. What I did in this case is choose from some of the generic plastics here like ABS, something that I could print on my 3D Wax 1. Now, understanding that a 3D printed part is going to have a different behavior than a completely solid ABS part, this will at least give me some understanding of how the part will behave but it's not 100% the behavior of my finished part that will be 3D printed. So you can pick and choose from a couple of these if you wish to do so. If nothing suits your needs, you can always come back here and make some modifications. You can even apply multiple uh, materials here using different bodies in your study. But I'm gonna come back here real quick and maybe I wanna take that generic ABS and we're gonna customize this just a little bit. So for example, You'll notice that it didn't have all of the properties in there for things like uh, yield strength. So we'll go back and add some other properties here now that we're able to customize that material. So pretty simple to get started with that. We'll just throw in a value here that will make sense for the analysis we're trying to run. That'll at least give us a better idea of the overall behavior so I can look at stress concentrations, things of that nature. So materials done. Next, we have to define some fixtures. Now, we're making some assumptions here. We could always go back and refine this a little bit with uh, split lines, for example. But I'm just gonna use a quick shortcut here, select tangency to pick the inside of those slots. We'll go ahead and fix the entire thing. Not entirely accurate, but a good starting point to at least give us uh, some idea of where we need to go with our uh, finalized simulation. So let's move on to applying the load here. We'll do a little bit of setup ahead of time, creating a reference sketch. What I wanna do is place a point out in space that I can use to create a coordinate system. And what this will do is allow me to create a remote load or mass at a specific location. So we're not being real precise with it here and obviously we're making some assumptions to keep this pretty simple. You can dial it in later, but this is a good enough place to start for at least getting an overall behavior. What we want to do is create a coordinate system at the end of that sketch that I've created. That coordinate system will essentially be the attachment point for the load back to the faces of the slingshot. So taking advantage of some of our sketch geometry here, uh, let's come back and actually show the sketch here so we can go ahead and pick from that pretty easily and then attach it to those surfaces. So we can also 
align the coordinate system with other entities in their design, like sketch segments if I want to pick X and Y for my directions. That'll make it easier for me to apply the load in a particular direction later on. So let's head back to our simulation study. Um, we'll go ahead and apply a remote load in this case. Uh, let's take a step back here. The remote load you'll find under the external loads. And what we're gonna do is attach to the faces that we've used with our split line here. And we'll use that new coordinate system that we created. So I'll go ahead and show the coordinate system here real quick. And now I can pick that out in space as a reference point that I want to use for applying that load. So next step is just to dial in the magnitude of the force that we want to apply and in which direction. So having that coordinate system to pick from is a pretty nice option. We can change the units if we wish to do so. So we'll apply pounds in this case. The surgical tubing that I'm going to use is a, a five pound resistance. So we'll go ahead and enter that as our translational component in the X direction. So we're able to pull back on this component and I think this thing is pretty much ready to run in this case. So we can go ahead and run our study at this point. Pretty simple to do just from the right click menu at the top of the tree. We'll mesh the part, go through a quick run of our simulation study and just help us to understand where are some of our stress concentrations are we going to be in danger of yielding the part or anything like that? I can get a look at overall displacement or maximum stresses, whatever I'm interested in in this case. So poking through a couple of the results here, it looks like we'll get a fair amount of displacement. We can do a quick animation just to understand uh, directional behavior of that displacement. Keep in mind that is a, an amplified or exaggerated result. So what we see on screen is kind of a larger displacement than what I would actually observe. Now, I could also dial this in a little bit further and use something like a factor of safety plot if I wanted to make sure that I'm within a certain safety factor of my design or anything like that. It actually gives you the ability to show what is your minimum factor of safety and how does that compare in multiple areas of the part. So for example, if I want to call out where is the minimum factor of safety, in this case, it's almost two, and it's going to be kind of right at the bottom of one of those slots. I might be concerned about singularity behaviors in a case like this, because that is one of the fixed points on my design, but we've got other tips on how to investigate that. And something else that I find handy is dialing in a range of factors of safety. So if you wanted to show which, are, which areas of your design are below or above a certain factor of safety. That's really easy to do just by modifying the scale of your plot here. So that gives us some quick insight. Obviously, we would wanna dial this in a little bit further, knowing what we know about the behavior of our 3D printed part, but a decent place to start just to give us a, kind of a generic idea of how it's going to behave. And we can make some decisions moving forward from there. If we had to maybe thicken up a section of that slingshot or anything like that to get it ready for manufacturing. I hope you guys enjoyed all of these kayak modifications. I know I had a lot of fun putting them together and I hope you learned something along the way. If you enjoyed this series, make sure to subscribe to our channel because we've got a lot more coming your way. We'll see you around.